No, Poirier, in my mind, is the uncrowned champion right now. Listen, Khabib's gone. Khabib's gone. It's it's over. It's done. He, he admitted it. Dana pretty much admitted it. Uh, and and you got to respect the man's decision. Leave him alone. Khabib's out of the equation right now. So therefore, come on, you can't say it's not Dustin. Dustin needs to fight for the belt. He's not crowned, but he's the he's the champ elect. He's the have man that ever... everyone will see as the champion. Go on, what crown well, somebody they... without yeah. winning? Yeah. Uh, well, Ronda Rousey had it when they created the women's division, remember? And I yeah. think it happened one other time. Uh, anyway, but that's the only example I can give you. So, But that isn't going to happen. They're not going to crown a champion in a division as hot as lightweight division without a fight, without a fight that they can sell, you know? So it's got to be Poirier versus somebody. It ain't going to be Chandler versus Oliveira or Dustin just sits out on the sideline. I understand right. what Poirier is saying in his mind that was the title fight. When I fought Anderson Silva, in my mind, that was my title fight. And if I win and I can retire on that, great. And obviously, I wanted to win the belt. But at that time, in my mind, that was a world title fight. And that's how Poirier was viewing that. I was going to say, I'm so happy for Dustin Poirier. I mean, here's a man, the mission he's been on, the amount of time he's been in this sport, the wars that he's been in. Um, to see him now getting all the the Jews that he's paid for. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's worked his ass. He did it the long way. The, he took the long road round, did it the old fashioned way through blood, sweat and tears. But he's got there. He's got to win one more fight and he will be the undisputed champion. It's a beautiful thing. I would put RDA in there. I don't know why, you know, they're they're kind of counting him out and not putting him in there. I would put RDA in there with um with someone like um I would say give him Connor. That fight was a fight was meant to happen before it didn't take place. We all know how how that one was. And so I'd give him Connor. Now this is one thing that you have to ask yourself and, and it's not just yeah, as a promoter, yeah, it makes sense. You know, your your job is to try to make as much money as possible for the company. But when you look at the uh, the athletes and the opponent, it's, it's like, okay, Connor, uh, what are you, what are you fighting for? Are you trying to get back to the title, or are you just trying to entertain and and, and make money here? Because if it's for you, are still trying to chase after being the best in the world. What what good is it? What's the point of fighting Nate Diaz who? really hasn't fought anyone in that top five in the, in the, in the, in the, in a while that he's just kind of hanging out just to fight, make money and, 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 you know, sit on the shelf for a while. So that's the only reason why I wouldn't make that fight. But of course the trilogy makes sense. It, it, it's, you know, it makes money, you know, both guys make money, but what does that do for someone like Connor? You know, it's not like Nate, Nate's in the top five. You know, that's not going to get getting you any closer to being the champion. If you really want to wear gold, then, you know, that's not necessarily the fight that you make. But of course, as a promoter standpoint, yeah, it's a good fight to make.
Esta... Well, Chill, first let me just say, and I'm sure I'm going to annoy people, piss people off by saying this, I'm all in. I love everything about this. Look, I, I don't get offended by Jake Paul like so many other people. I would say to these people, lighten up. Guys, come on. I mean, the guy is doing exactly what so many before him have done. He goes into the fight game. He, he wears a lot of expensive jewelry. He's poking the bear left, right, and center. And oh, by the way, he's actually taking this seriously. He actually trains. He has skills. He has skills appropriate to a 2-0 pro boxer. Yes, I know he beat a fellow YouTuber in his debut. And yes, I know he beat a basketball player who had never fought before in his second fight. But that's okay. Guys who are 2-0 are usually fighting guys who are 0-11. and he is training properly. He has a great head coach, BJ Flores, who's got a great resume. I'm okay with this. Now, what I love so much about this, Chael, is now he's taking on the MMA community. Before, it was Jake Paul coming into boxing. That was the big gimmick. Then it was Jake Paul versus the NBA. Now it's Jake Paul versus MMA. And he picks the one guy who everyone says can't strike, but who also has been talking trash to him as well, Ben Askren. I love everything about it. Can I tell you one thing I don't love about this though, Chael? Yeah. I don't like, and it bothers me. It really does annoy me. And I feel like you will agree with me on this. I don't like the disrespect that Ben Askren is receiving. Yes, I know his striking isn't, you know, world-class. And yes, I know he was knocked out by Jorge Masvidal, but to suggest that a man who's a two-time national champion, to suggest that a man who represented America in the Olympic Games, to suggest that a man who's a two-time Dan Hodge trophy winner, a Bellator champ, and a one championship champion, not to mention a UFC contender, is not a real fighter and not a tough SOB, is downright disrespectful to Ben Askren. Yeah, man, I don't think I believe that with Connor. I think um, I thought he still looked good. I, I guarantee you he was uh, still prepared uh, in preparations. You know, I'm pretty sure he was uh, getting stuck into it. He looked still in his own early. He was sharp, you know what I mean? So obviously people are just going to see the end result. But um, I just think uh, Poirier fought a, a smarter fight. He got tagged early and realized like, all right, stop this. So let's look for a take down. Let's just zap a bit of life out of Ort uh, of. Uh, Korean zombie stuffed, <laughs> stuffed up twice. You're uh, in your Conor division, Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, like my, my division, that's exactly what. Um, you know what I mean? And just zapped a bit of life out of him and then obviously them calf kicks, uh, you know what I mean? So it took him a couple of punches to realise, hey, don't get caught up in Conor's fight, you know, I'm going to fight my fight. And he did that and that's where I seen the, the change, you know. I don't think it was that max, um, that... Mate, I've got every, I've said every single I person I in my the division. I love it. I man. You're in the zone. Hey, I'm always in my zone, man, my division. Uh, I'm on all of it. But, uh, you know, Dustin obviously uh, did well. And, like, yeah, mate, uh, just made a, a, a little adjustment in the in the fight that, that definitely worked. But Connor was, uh, was still on point, I thought. So I think the motivation's there. And I think the fact that he lost and he knows he needs to climb back up, um, I reckon, I reckon this might, might be good for him. 